Chapter 31, My Dad. Same day, Wednesday, May 8th, 1935. We go to the parade grounds. Natalie gets on the swings. There's a mom there with her four-year-old son. She pushes him. I push Natalie. She's too big and too old for this. Her hips are too large for the seat. I ignore this. I ignore them. She can pump herself, but I know she prefers to have me push. After a few minutes, I notice her head is tipping to the side. I run around to the front, just in time to catch her as she falls forward. She's sound asleep. Tantrums exhaust her. I can sure see why. They exhaust me, too. I carry her home as best I can. She seems so solid, so big. A real grown-up person in my arms. I stop often, leaning her weight on a cement wall, the edge of a building, the banister. I'm almost to the back stairwell when my dad finds us. He doesn't ask what happened. He simply takes Natalie from me, and I follow him to our apartment. We walk through the wild mess of our living room, rug pulled out from the coffee table, vases upended in a puddle of water, broken plate silver slivers, and lemon cake scattered everywhere. My foot crunches the china pieces as I follow my father to Natalie's room. He places her gently on her bed and covers her with her favorite purple blanket. Then he goes to the icebox and opens a beer. He looks over at me, seems to think a minute, opens another and pours a full glass for himself and a half glass for me. My father rarely drinks and never with me. I had a few sip, sips once at Pete's house, but I didn't like it much. That doesn't matter. What matters is he seems to understand. In the living room, he sets his beer down, picks up the vase, and puts it back where it belongs. I set my beer by his and get the broom. The room is silent except for the clock ticking on the mantel, the sound of sweeping, and the clink of china pieces as my father drops them in the metal trash tin. Dad? I ask. How come you always do what mom tells you? My dad makes a funny sound, a kind of laugh through his nose. He says nothing, and then, a full minute later, I don't always. Most of the time. My father swallows, considers this. Yeah, most of the time, I guess I do. How come, I ask. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sweeping a piece of glass of sweeping a glass piece off the rug to the floor and up the incline to the dustpan. My father takes a sip of his beer. Things matter more to your mother than they do to me. What things? Everything. Everything? I ask. I'm watching him now, searching his golden brown eyes. Everything except you. My father bites his lip. The tears well up. He turns away and busies himself, tugging the rug back in place. I strain my eyelids open and try to breathe the tears back in my head. I look down, then take a breath. Dad, I ask. I'm going to tell him what happened now. I am. Yeah, he says. Did I cause Natalie to be the way she is? The question seems to come from somewhere deep inside of me. Moose? My father freezes, his eyes riveted on me. Something I did? You said she got worse when she was three. That's when I was born. Was it me? I concentrate on the rug. Moose? My dad grabs my shoulders and he looks straight into my eyes. I don't know, he says, taking a teary breath. What caused Natalie to be sick? I don't think anyone knows that, but I do know this. He bites his lip, his voice so full of feeling he's having trouble speaking. Absolutely, absolutely for sure it had nothing, nothing at all to do with you.